Falling in love is usually a good thing, but not when it's with your game idea. Falling in love with your game idea can be one of the worst habits uh, that a game studio can have. And while that sounds a little counterintuitive, it, uh, it, it, it feels like you should be passionate about your idea and, and you should fully back your idea. But falling in love with an idea goes a little bit beyond that, where you tend to follow through and get attached to an idea beyond what makes sense as a studio. And that can be a, an extremely expensive and costly mistake to make. And over the next couple of uh, few minutes, we're going to talk about why that's a bad idea and how we can develop habits that, uh, you know, help us and prevent us from falling into that trap. I mean, we've all been there, right, where we kind of get obsessed with the game idea that we're making and kind of uh, realize too late that uh, we shouldn't have done that. So, in, in your view, how would you frame um, why it's a bad idea to, you know, fall in love with your game too early? So, in the early stages of whether you're building a game or a feature, right, um, you have a concept. Uh, you're obviously going forward with the concept because you have some reason to think that it's going to do well, but you don't have any proof. Um, but like any enthusiastic designer, and I have made this mistake many times in the past, um, you tend to go deeper into it because that's what excites you as a designer. You continue to go deeper into the idea without verifying whether it works or not uh, and then you look up and it's been a year and you've gone deep down that rabbit hole where you've built the whole feature out with no idea whether it's going to work or not. Um, I can give you an example from, um, uh, from a game that I was working on at Zynga. So there were these features called bold beats that Zynga used to do that was supposed to raise the baseline uh, metric, any metric, whichever one that you were trying to go after. Um, and I was building a feature that was supposed to boost engagement, basically change the baseline of what engagement looked like on the app. Um, and uh, I, I still maintain that I think the base idea was good, but uh, we were supposed to ship the feature in four months. Instead, we took, I want to say 13 months to ship it. Um, and in my opinion, we didn't do um, enough research. We spent way too much time and we made a couple other mistakes but the, the point I'm trying to make is that we fell in love with the idea that we were building. I was a lead designer on that so I'll take responsibility for it. I fell in love with the idea uh, and I refused to kill it. Uh, there was actually a discussion at the like eight, eight month mark where, we, where you know s senior people in the studio were asking are we making the mistake of not killing this too early and just through my like my passion and my force of personality, I convinced them that no, I think this is absolutely the right direction to go in. And I was very wrong, which we found out too late once we shipped the feature, um, severely tanked our numbers. Um, we actually started doing worse once the feature went out. And that was a huge failure. And if we had found that out, say two months in, three months in, even six months in, we would have found it, found out earlier and fixed it earlier, but we were too deep into it to have made much of a difference at that point. So that is a big problem because you've spent money and time on it. Um, big studios can absorb that cost. Small studios just cannot afford to do that. So it's really important to learn to identify that moment when you have that irrational love for a, for a feature or for a game and stop and question yourself and say, is this too much? I think it's important what you said, right, Irrational. I think what happens often also is that you start identifying with your idea and then you take it personally and then it's no longer your idea, but it's about you. And anyone criticizing the idea, for killing the idea, you're almost protecting yourself rather than protecting your idea. And that becomes a very often a reason and one of the most uh, important skills for a designer is to be able to separate the two and say that you are here and your idea is here. They are not one and the same.